says, Dan, they just call me Granny May. Granny May, they said I look like Gladys. Elvis is called a little maid back hat, and I'm from Beaver Dam, Mississippi. Everybody there calls me Granny May. Little maid, thank you. I was named after my great aunt. Hello, love, Yes, everybody says they see a resemblance. Well, over at the Pink Peak Trailer Park, it burned up. Seems that Mavis Brubaker, our only town beautician, she was flying her husband Joe up some spam when her Lee Brickstone nails caught fire. The whole trailer park burned up in a matter of minutes. And my trailer was next door. Lost my teeth. And the worst thing was I lost my moonshine. Y'all like moonshine? Well, it, I like it because it eases my aches and my pains and helps me rest at night. And frankly, I like to get a buzz on. I recently moved back in with my daughter, Matthew Ferguson. And yes, he was named after a tractor, but that's another story. Three yarns back home. I've got Maggie Ferguson. She runs the Welcome Center over there. Then I have Candy Kane. She's a madam out at the Cotton Road Cat House. And then I have Christopher. Well, Christopher, he lives over here in New Orleans. He's one of them drag queens. <laughs> He does shows over there uh, in the French Quarter. They call him Christy Crockett over there. <laughs> I didn't kill her husband, you know, I didn't kill him. I didn't bury him in my backyard, but they did die before I did. I lost everything in that bar, including my teeth. But I'm lucky that my boyfriend, Virgil, he and I, we share them teeth, but tonight happens to be his night. Virgil was taking me down through the bottom, and we was on the back of his old new Mabel, and all of a sudden, well, I just moved back in with uh, my daughter, Matthew Ferguson, in, in the Welcome Center, and her slew of kids, and cats, and dogs, and there's only three things that I really hate, and that's kids, and cats, and dogs. <laughs> Well, I had to move back in because my trailer, oh, it's a pink, pink trail car, it burned up. Seems that Mavis Brubaker, our only town beautician, she was frying her husband, Joe, up some spam when her lead press on the nails caught off. <laughs> well, 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 Joe, he jumped up and he dashed that far with his jelly jar full of moonshine. Well, that was an explosion that wiped out the entire trailer park. <laughs> My trailer was next door, and it was the first to go. Lost everything I had, including my teeth. <laughs> and the worst thing was my moonshine. Oh, yeah. Well, the other day, I was out in my backyard hanging out some laundry. And my friend Alila, she raised over the picket fence and she said, May, how come you always know when to hang out your laundry? The rest of us get caught on rainy days. I said, well, when I get up in the morning, I look over at Virgil. And if his thing is laying to the left, I know it's going to rain. And if it's hanging to the right, I know it's going to be sunny. And she said, well, why is it standing straight up? And I said, well, who wants to do laundry on a day like that? Well, I like my moonshine. I like to get a buzz on. What do y'all like to do? I know you do, because I've seen you over at Frank Duke, darling. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. I peed all over the back of that mule. <laughs> and that mule got across that board without wetting his feet. He didn't stop till he got into the next county. Well, I turned around and I saw the biggest, 
the ugliest and the hairiest motherfucker I ever seen in my life. It had to be a Bigfoot. Well, let me tell you, y'all thinking we was already drunk, but we was on our way to get the moonshine. We hadn't got none yet. But I tell you this, when we got home, we got us the buzz on. Well, I've been wanting to make some extra money for my moonshine. So I got a job over at the Love Matrix with Eugene Hornswoggle doing jet therapy. And I got this thing, I'll show you what I do. Hey, baby cake. Ooh, ah. How you doing, sugar lips? Ooh, ah. Want me to do a lip walk on that Jimmy stick? Ooh, ah, give me my money. How's that? Well, honey, I guess I have to clean toilets or something if I can't get a job doing phone today. Yeah, that's right. No, uh, well, well y'all heard about this student. phone tech stuff? Yeah, you know, in Hollywood or snacks, I need to pay somebody to lap up to get some help. Or in the state of you know, I, I know some old mules out there. They can they intended to help somebody. So, but well, do y'all believe in Bigfoot? Yes. Well, I never did believe in it, but a while back, Berger, he was taking me down through the bottom on the back of his old mule, Mabel. And when we was getting ready to cross Vernon's forward, that you get stuck. Stop dead in his tracks. Would not burn. Well, all of a sudden, out from in them woods comes this hog like, whoa! <laughs> well, let me tell you this, I pee all over the back of that mule. <laughs> and it scared that mule so bad he got across that creek without even wetting his feet. Well, I turned around. And this thing let out another, yeah, woo -hoo! That was the biggest, the ugly, and the hairiest motherfucker I ever did see in my life. It had to be the big bird. Well, that mule did not stop until he got into the next town. Well, I know what y'all saying. We was already drunk. We were seeing things. We hadn't got the shine yet. We was on the way to get it. But I can tell you this, when we got home, we got a buzz on. That's for sure. Well, whew, I've been wanting to try to get me a job doing that phone sex stuff. Y'all heard about that? Yeah, good, ain't it? Well, they did a company called the Love Maker. So I've been wanting to get a job, but I'm gonna, uh, I got my little thing up. Yeah, they're hookers, not, not, not hookers. They're dangerous, they really are dangerous. Yeah, they're gonna come out here and dance for y'all. Let me know what y'all think. <laughs> hey, baby. Ooh. Hey, sugar lips. Uh. <laughs> Want me to do a lip lock on that Jimmy Dick of yours? Ooh, ooh, baby, send my money. Mississippi, the birthplace of Oprah Winfrey. When we got there, I seen a big sign that said, Oprah Winfrey Boulevard. It was a dirt road. We went down that dirt road and we seen a big sign that said, Oprah Winfrey, big talk show hurt, born here. They wasn't nothing there but the motherfucking sign. Unless she was born in a tent, it was gone. The first road trip they sent me on was over the Codgaster, Mississippi. The birthplace of the Oprah Winfrey. Well, we went down the road and we turned on the Oprah Winfrey Boulevard. It was a motherfucking dirt road. We went down that dirt road and there was a big Famous talk show host born here. 
They wasn't nothing there but the motherfucking time. So if you get ready to go, ladies, get there. The next place they sent me on was here to Memphis, to Elvis's place, the Graceland. Everybody wanted their picture made with Granny Mae. They said I looked like Elvis' mama glass. Yeah. So when I got through seeing the house, I went outside next to his grave. You know they buried him in his backyard. I pulled out my moonshine and I said, well, I'm going to share this with Elvis. Well, let me tell you, before I could take the first step, they had done a company that security escorted me off of the property. And it confiscated my moonshine. Well, I knew something that very minute that the king was not dead. He was up in that motherfucking house drinking my moonshine. Sure enough. Well, the next place they sent me on was to New Orleans, Louisiana. We had a blast going down Bourbon Street. They were women flinging out of windows naked and shit. It was my kind of place. Then they decided to send me on one of them historical tours. They shoved my fat ass up in the back of one of them buggies. And I sat there for a minute and I noticed that the motherfucker was being pulled by a mule. I said, oh shit. So I put my apprehension to a side and I said, let's just see what happens. Well, everything was fine until we got over there next to that cemetery where that voodoo woman was buried and that mother stopped in the middle of the road. I said, let me do an experiment. So I said, yeah, woohoo! I learned something that day. When you think Bigfoot has their ass, they can spread wings and fly. Good night, everybody. Granny Mae loves ya. The last one they sent me, I went over here to the beautiful city of New Orleans. Mr. Salami and Chrissy Crockett, they took me down Bourbon Street. I had a blast, I had people with party out of windows and shit. It was a blast. <laughs> then they decided they were going to take me on one of them historical tours. My fat ass up in the back of one of them buggies. <laughs> I sat there and I noticed the son of a bitch was being pulled by a mule. <laughs> I said, oh shit. I put my ass behind the side and I said, I'm just going to see what happens. <laughs> well, he did real good. One of that graveyard where that Maria, whoever it was, that voodoo queen, was buried, and the motherfucker stopped in the middle of the road. I said to myself, this let me do an experiment. So I let out a big foot scream. Woohoo! Let me tell you, that mule got across that intersection without touching the pavement. And I learned something that day. When mules think Bigfoot got their ass, they can spread wings and fly. Merry Christmas, everybody. Ready, man?